This video is a collaboration with Daniel, who you might better know as Borodante. I knew that some of you already followed him and contacted him so we could make a little collaboration. In case you don't know who Daniel is, he's a proactive concept artist who makes Let's Paint reviews and video tutorials. He makes up to three every week. This video is a bit special because we sat together for two hours painting and chatting, but unfortunately I had issues with the recording and could only salvage a small part of the audio. So in this video, which is a bit special, you'll learn about Borodante, who will give you some art tips along the way. You're going to see the painting I did, and if you want to see his, you have to go to his channel, where he made another video complementary to this one to showcase his artwork, which is a lot better than mine, in all honesty. You'll find a link to his channel and to his video in the description below. Enjoy! Especially for open source, I think it's interesting to get people to work together. That, that's really something I want to see more and more. And uh, that's how the open source programs are going to thrive, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. That's the only thing we got in open source. <laughs> people working together. Okay, so we are here, me, Boro Dante, and GD Quest, the Nathan. Or <laughs> the other way around. Uh, and we're about to do a little bit of an art contest and collaboration at the same time. We are going to draw a voodoo doll. Uh, something frightening or something stupid, I don't know exactly. And the main twist about it, we're going to be drawing and painting at the same time. First, we'll be doing sketch stage separately and then switching the sketches between us. So, we'll be painting on top of each other's sketches afterwards. 30 minutes for the sketch. Sometime before I looked through some references on uh, Google, it's mostly just kind of like yarny plushies. If it's like um, pop culture voodoo dolls, they're just like made of yarn thing with buttons instead of like for their eyes. And if it's like authentic, then it's usually just a bunch of straws tied together in like a T-shape, like a cross shape, with an awkward face on it, something like that. It'll be funny if we'll end up both like making a design of a very basic thing, it's like the same. <laughs> I was a concept artist in the like a movie company, we were doing visual effects, 3D animation and stuff like that. I started as kind of like an animator for pre-visualization. You know, it's like um, a drafty, like old school, like PlayStation 1 level of graphics animation where you develop just the timing, the camera angles and everything. And after you get this animation, they actually start working on the film. Pre-visualization of the movie it was starting with that, but that didn't work out very well. Then they discovered that I'm much better at painting, so <laughs> I became a concept artist there. I used to be a student uh, for a computer science. I have the master's degree in programming, basically. But I, I'm really bad at that, because most of the time in the university, I spent drawing and painting. That was about it. After I graduated, I just went to this company and said, give me money in exchange for art. And they said, okay. Um, I used to have, like, my main artistic nickname is Dante, since I read that comedy by Dante Alighieri, I was really inspired by the dude. So, since I, um, I really like paint dark stuff, especially before, I used to paint a lot of really dark artwork. I thought, that is a pretty cool, you know, image to have, like, Dante, who's traveling through the circles of hell, something like that. I decided to have that name. Plus, it's really close to Daniel, so really felt right. And after that, uh, at a certain point, I grew a beard. And I thought, well, beards are great. You agree, right? <laughs> and in Russian, the my main language, uh, beard is boroda. So I kind of merged two words 
into Poro Dante. What I really found interesting about this uh, combination is that it like makes the whole Dante thing about less pretentious or something, like less dramatic and more like casual, since the channel is kind of like that too. I decided to tone it down a bit. And that's how we got the Porro Dante. <laughs> Once in, like, when I was working in the company, I had to do matte painting. That's the word. It had to look, like, absolutely realistic. They were literally replacing the background of the actual footage with whatever I will get done there in Photoshop. And for that, you have to use a lot of photo bashing. I am so horrible at that. I can't. Like, you probably have to, like, spend 99% of the time to just look up pictures. I can't. How can you find the proper angle and proper lighting at the same time, the one you need? I can't. Like, this was so frustrating and boring to me. I couldn't. And the movie is about, like, war which is like the most boring subject for me ever, like when it's a real war, people against people. I can't, I can't, it's too much reality. I don't usually work for clients or anything, like except for uh, the work I do with Kevin Folk right now, the writer that we're working on the book. Mostly I like concentrate on YouTube right now. I never thought of, had no idea that I have an art style or anything, but people tend to like recognize my art style and I was like, really? Where did you get that? I, it feels like I constantly paint very differently. I don't really pursue the goal of having a specific style. Even very recently I figured out that I am really just a character artist. I don't like painting landscapes or something like that. Well, it's just not my thing, and that's probably the only thing I can say confidently about myself, that I'm not really all that much into something besides character art. That would be probably the, the only way to describe it. But experimenting, yeah, sure. I used to work in the office, and that was in the office. Um, I mean, I found it really hard to work with, like, routine stuff. It feel, felt like a, a really a great a new thing to work with, like when I started YouTube, because I literally can do whatever I want, and I feel like that brings certain variety to the channel, and it goes, like, naturally. I do like experimenting, that's one thing I can say for sure. It was in two stages. First I said, like, I, I'm gonna drop everything, and then a year later, I decided, hmm, I'm gonna do YouTube. <laughs> because uh, I went home and I thought, I want to work on my portfolio and on my level. After a year and a half of working in an office, I really felt like I had no time to actually develop. I just need so much time just working on my own thing. And I had no opportunity to do that. And I like craved it so much. So I just went home. I had some money saved that I already just, it's gone. <laughs> but at that point, I had some time to just work on my portfolio. I did a pretty cool, as I thought back then, a pretty cool mm, showreel with 3D animation and all kinds of 2D artwork. That was pretty cool. It's on my channel. It's called someone like Dante Showreel 2014, I think. And then I sent a few resumes here and there, no one answered me, then I just went ahead and started YouTube. <laughs> That's how it went. Uh, thing is that uh, in production a lot of the times uh, things are segregated stages of the project. I mean like someone may be developing the concept of the character and you will be rendering it. Basically the way we work right now we have sketches made by someone else and we are rendering them. That's uh, the, basically the production uh, situation, I would say. Like, you're, you're not losing anything if you work in layers, since you don't have to search for shapes or something. You already have them defined by a different artist. Still basically paint in one layer. I have a background and a separate layer. I don't know why, but I'm not using it. Like, right now I'm painting a shadow in the separate layer, so it's just a mess. The point is that 
painting a character all in one layer, it has such a weird feeling when you just go with that because you start with searching the light and colors and everything and it feels like such a mess, it's overwhelming and you just make small decisions and like what kind of lighting I would have here, there and after a while it's like, oh, I'm getting pretty cool light here. <laughs> so I don't know, I hope that is what's gonna happen now. You can't just make a light on one part of a character if you're going for full realistic or like beauty render as I call it. Uh, you can't just end up with just rendering ambient light and direct light, light on uh, one part, body part, in one layer and then switch to another. And that would be like totally fine. It wouldn't because light bounces back and forth so everything has to like live together inside of that light. And that's so much easier to actually do that when you're in one layer. But at the same time, if you use layers, like if they would say change the color of the car without changing the color of the rim light, you may end up with a lot faster approach if you have the whole color of the car in one layer, you know? I was the most layerist artist in the world just about a year ago. I used to have this theory of blending colors in Photoshop the way uh, passes blend in 3D rendering. So I was really going for like blending color and multiply, uh, lights in add mode and so on and so forth. I had like everything solved with the math of layers. And in that case it was so cool to just afterwards decide on the color of the shirt, of the character and so on. I was always working in black and white. Even when you're like adding color of a light, it was just filtered by the color of the material and even the light itself, you just paint by its mask. So you always work with black and white mode. It was kind of weird. I usually work in one layer, I don't use uh, gradients or anything. I usually work with brushes, that's why I always experiment so much to make my brushes instant fast. I have a brush that can just basically fill in the whole 6k canvas in like a few seconds <laughs> if I need to. So yeah, I, I don't like switch, like going away from brushes to something else. You don't really need that when you're like, you know, going full artist. Never go full artist. <laughs> and black and white is definitely a great technique to search for a concept. Many artists do that. I never got to doing it and I don't know why. I guess I just love colors so much. <laughs> I go more and more col colorful with time instead of doing the other way around. Oh my, my character is like a rainbow now. Like a rainbow that is rotten. That's the way I would describe it. I really was happy about Black Ink idea is that node interface means like all kinds of com complexity and all, right? So if it would have more of those features in those nodes, like the ones that we have in Photoshop, and it would really be a lot more free to customize because certain things are really limited in Photoshop, which are less limited in Krita even. Like for instance, I can't make brush get smaller when I press harder, you know, that kind of stuff. And with nodes, you probably can easily make that happen. Or with Krita, okay. <laughs> I really missed the ability to use blending features or something like that. Different types of transparency, like that stuff that I always look for in a program, you know. And that is not there. It really feels like a lot more of a vector kind of designer of a brush. And that's a bit of a different thing. And I'm not even sure, like, all these overly complex brushes that you can create if they're just vector. Do you really find all that much of usage for it? I'm not sure. Like, how much can you create of artwork when it's like, some crazy brush that paints a whole galaxy in one stroke? Do you really need that? I'm not sure. It was definitely fun to uh, just, you know, play around with, but I would surely wouldn't end up creating some cool artwork with it. That's just, again, my perspective. Maybe some artists really use it a lot. I used to have a huge problem before I started YouTube. I used to work on one painting for like three weeks, everyday painting, and that was horrible for my improvement. 
what I really felt like I really need when I started YouTube is just constantly start and finish the painting, start and finish. Even if it's like not very detailed, not very well done. Well, if you can't make it good quick, then you can't really make it happen at all. Because if you make a painting for like a super long time, most of the time you spend on fixing what you messed up in the beginning. <laughs> That's one thing that I really concentrate a lot, like starting correctly. And you have to start so many times to finally find out what are you doing wrong? Why do you have to constantly fix? Where is that place where you waste so many time? Really, as you said, like you have to think about what you're doing. You really have to sit down and think through the whole process and really make proper decisions. Th that's actually one thing that I wanted to mention about when you start detailing for too long. Don't turn off your brain from the big picture when you go into small details. Like, if you want to improve and you waste time painting in details, that's one word that was really, like, my main evil force that I had to fight for a while. I don't know if there's a politically correct word for it, but I call it, like, autism. When you start, uh, like, painting these small details, you just turn off most of your brain and you're just doing these small things. It's really not getting you anywhere. And the thing is that at an early stage, you really need to give up this detailing at all. Because you have to really concentrate on the beginning stage of the painting or drawing. Putting details on a painting is not supposed to be easier than building it in the beginning. If it gets easier, it means you're doing it wrong. Because you turn off that part of the brain that comprehends the whole composition. So all the details that you put on, you don't really consider the geometry, the dynamics, the global lighting. So everything starts to look kind of flat and it starts to look like you are overwhelmed by your own details. And that's the hardest thing to do. When I'll like master that part, being able to comprehend small detail and the big picture at the same time. I feel that's like the ultimate goal for everything, I guess. That's like an absolute genius if you are able to work with the big and the small at the same time. The more details you can work with while not losing the big picture, the more powerful you are in whatever you're doing. I'm just looking for the weakest parts and trying to do something about it. I gotta say, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I hope it will be like a trend on YouTube, making this kind of challenge. Then I'll turn off the camera and I'm just a guy alone in the apartment. <laughs> and here's Boro Dante's artwork, based off my sketch. It's very colorful, it's detailed, it has a strong composition, a lot of contrast. It was so cool to see someone more experienced than me take my sketch and make something beautiful of it. I love these types of experiences, exchanging with other artists. This is extremely motivating, like, if you have the opportunity to do it, do it. You can find Borodante's art time-lapse and his video on his channel. Plus, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. You guys tell me and tell Nathan, how did we do? Was everything okay? <laughs> I don't know. And we are thanking you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend. And also, don't throw your dolls in space. Never mind, do whatever you want. And we will see you in the next one.